Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Today is January 20. Oh, damn, I had this remembered. January 29th, and we haven't called up each other yet, so you're just a Skype window, Aaron. Uh, yeah, hold on, just one sec. Yeah, that's fine, though. Let's switch back to the logo, meanwhile. <laughs> yeah, January 29th, 2012, and you're watching our growth weekly number 59. And today we have a really nice agenda for you guys. It's, uh, it's full of just stuff in general. Let's see. Yeah, look at that agenda. Look at it. And uh, here today we have uh, me, of course, Mr. Lucas, aka Silverfish, and uh, someone just asked me if I am from Sweden. That is correct. I I am from Sweden, and uh, here we are. Here we are, man. Hello. <laughs> Hi. So the reason this probably feels a bit rushed is because it uh, it is a bit a bit rushed. Um, Anton was supposed to be on the show, but uh, he was working really hard like this entire morning. He went up super early uh, to start working so he could get stuff done and hopefully do our growth weekly. But like 10 minutes ago or like five minutes before the show was supposed to start um some guys called him the guys who he was going to do the work for he was going to do some recording or something and needed to prepare for that and they called and wanted to make changes so he really didn't have time to, to do it quickly unfortunately yeah he's, he's a busy person sometimes <laughs> yeah he is so what's up with you aaron um not much. I started school recently, so I've been unfortunately more busy with that, uh, and I've had a little less time to work on the things that I'd, I'd rather work on, but progress is still made. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, pretty much the same thing for me. School has started for reals now, and uh, yeah, it's just it's just schoolwork, man. So I haven't been... Uh, I've been trying as much as I can to just pop in and add stuff to the agenda and stuff like that, but it's it's hard to keep up when you need, have all these things to do, so so I know what you're talking about. Yeah. But yeah, let's get on with the show, man. Let's get on with the show. We're already, we started like five minutes late. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, I need to memorize these. I, I, okay, I'm going to, for the next week's show, I promise you I'm going to have memorized all of these buttons, which button I'm supposed to press <laughs> to get where I want to go. That's the button. Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> okay, so the agenda, it's huge, as I mentioned a while ago. It's been huge the last uh, the last three of Growth Weekly. It's, it's pretty, pretty amazing. And as usual, we're going to start out with the latest alpha. I actually have turned off the extension for the checkboxes, so, so we're going to have to live without them for now, unfortunately. Well, that sucks. Yeah, it's fine. They'll, they'll be back. Don't worry. So Alpha 166 added a bunch of cool things to Overgrowth. Um, most notably, you can now throw knives. Like, you could throw knives in the last Alpha, but now they actually stick into your opponent. Uh, so that's the most amazing thing. <laughs> it can be pretty gruesome. Yeah, really. It really makes... It just feels great. I want to do that all the time. <laughs> So, added knife hostage animation replaces choke when using knife. Shall we take a look at that? Let us take a look at that. Everyone here in Overgrowth land are very friendly people. No fighting is going on here. Let's add a knife. Let's put it over by my spawn point. And let's attach it to my clear. And enter play mode and restart the level. I'm having some weird lag here, but that's fine. And there you have it. The hostage generation. Uh, the good thing about this one is that uh, your opponent won't j die after a while. When you had the normal choke, they always die after a while, but now you can just walk around with them like this for as much as you want. And another item of the change log mentions that you can now slit people's throats, like so. Which is one of the most gruesome things in the game so far. Yeah, I think so too. It utilizes the the neck artery split thing. Yeah, it's nice that that finally has a, a direct use. Yeah, I agree. 
And while I'm at it, I thought I can show you off the Noth. That's what I'm saying. The Noth throwing. The knife throwing. <laughs> so let's do this in slow motion, man. Yes. Yes, indeed. Ooh. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I finished in one minute. Nice. That is... I... Yeah. I... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, that speaks for itself quite well. <laughs> so we've gone through the knife hostage animation, the throat cut. We have the... Uh, uh, let's see... Sticking and cutting for thrown sharp weapons. Let's uh, check a look at the one-handed body drag when wielding weapons as well. So let me take that knife from you. And when I pull him, I do it with one hand. And that's that. You can have your knife back. Uh, next. And you should stick in a cut. I said that's sharp weapons. Check sharpness map for collision type. So if you hit your opponent with like the handle of the weapon instead of uh, instead of hitting him with uh, the sharp part of your weapon, he will uh, the weapon will not stick. It will just bounce off. Well, it won't bounce off really because currently it doesn't matter if it sticks with the sharp part or the non-sharp part. It still does the same amount of damage. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, your opponent. Though so I die. believe uh, tweets have shown that that this coming week things will change with that. Yeah. So in the next alpha, that will probably be changed. And the last item on the agenda is weapon throw AI leads, moving targets, calculates arc and number of spins needed, which is really cool. If we take a look at this, let's take a look at this. Let us take a look. So let's restart this level. What I can actually do is hit someone from uh, an incredible range. Let's try. Oh, he noticed me too early. I don't know why he notices me, man. He's crazy. Man, you crazy, man. I think he's just running for the knife. Probably. Oh, knife, 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 knife. Yeah, but anyways, it does calculate the perfect path to hit someone when he's walking in a straight path. I promise you, but... but yeah, he just <laughs> you can see it in the alpha video. Yeah, you can see it in the alpha video exactly. But he just really, he just really, really wants that <coughs> knife, man. He he really wants it. He, I think he has like a sixth sense, sixth sense for knives. He's like, I think there's a knife flying towards me behind me, and then he like turns around. And runs <laughs> Some people have that. I, can I guess. Sense the steel. Yes, <laughs> it's his rabbit sense. All rabbits have it, or something. I don't know. But that's going to be made uh, less accurate uh, in the future. But it's easier to like start with something super accurate and then make it less accurate. It's harder to mm -hmm. do the other way around, I'd say. Uh, next we have a tutorial. So we're going to have a... a... Yeah, we're going to have a tutorial, man. <laughs> this is something that we started with last week. Um, every week I will try to release a tutorial, and I will also do the same tutorial live, as well, uh, during Overgrowth Weekly. So, I'm going to start up my notes here. Let's see... Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. I can actually show you my notes, because you can access these notes, and uh, tell me what to do. Yeah, it's a long tutorial, there are a lot of notes. <laughs> And uh, there we go. Okay, so we are going to take a look at hand-to-hand -hand combat in this tutorial. And uh, Aaron, feel free to open up those notes you as well if you have them. I can Let's see. They're in the Overgrowth Weekly topic on the Wolfire subforum. Okay. In the topmost topic. Let's remove this knife here as well. So we have no weapons involved. Oh, will my game crash for that? Yeah, I guess it will. That's fine though. It's an alpha game. 
and uh, we've mentioned it many times before, but overgrowth actually do not crash uh, as much as a lot of other alpha games do, so, so it's actually pretty good compared to most alphas. Yeah, for an alpha build, it's pretty stable. I don't think a lot of people will realize that. Mm -hmm. We're being spoiled <laughs> by Mr. David. Alright, let's load up this level this time, because that's the level that I was supposed to. I was supposed to use. I don't know. I've actually created the video for this tutorial already. But anyways. Okay, so here we are. Okay, so hand-to-hand -hand combat. What you need to think about when you're doing hand-to-hand -hand combat for overgrowth is that uh, all all attacks are context sensitive. Like almost everything in overgrowth is context sensitive as well. And uh, well, the attacks are, are are just like that as well. So there are a few uh, things that will affect what attack you will do when you're in the game. Uh, and uh, for instance, if I press right left click when I'm in this position my character won't do anything because I'm just too far away to attack the guy, so so my character will not attack him. It makes sense. And uh, there are a few variables, uh, as I said, that affect what attack uh, your character will do, and those are the distance you have from your opponent, if you're close or far away, and if you're crouching or not, if you're running or not, or rather if you're trying to move around or not, if you're in the air or not, and if you're ragdolled or not. And uh, so those are all things that will affect what attack uh, your uh, guy will do in the game. Let's see. I need to just do that. Okay, maybe now it will go better. No? Yeah, that's better. Uh, I just turned off a program that was causing my game to lag a bit, but that's fixed now. So, these are a lot of things, a lot of variables to keep track of, but you don't really need to think about it when you're when you're actually fighting in the game. It comes very... Uh, well, almost automatically, it's very easy to understand how it works. So, the uh, different attacks you can do while you're this uh, particular character, while you're, while you're playing as Turner, are when you're far away and still, and you, and you just press attack, you'll do the kick. If you're close and do the same thing, just press attack, you'll knee your opponent. If you're far away and moving, you will do the roundhouse kick. If you're close and moving, you will do the jab attack. If you're crouching, you will do the sweep kick. And if you're in the air, you will do the rabbit kick. And if your opponent is ragdolled, you will do the soccer kick. Now my opponent died, I don't want that to happen. Let's see if I can get a soccer kick. He's too good at standing up. <laughs> there we go. So it's basically a normal soccer kick towards your opponent when he's lying on the ground. It's, it's pretty basic. So it's often uh, one of the better moves since you can get a pretty good kick to the head. Yeah, absolutely. It's a very powerful move. Like if, if your opponent is close to a wall or something like that, it's, it's devastating. So that's something you really want to do. So the attacks vary depending on what character you have. Some characters have different movesets, but it's still all these variables still apply to uh, to when you're playing the character. So, so if you want to check out what attacks a certain character have, you you now know what different uh, variables uh, that affect what attack you'll do. And if you're holding uh, the attack button, your character will just attack as soon as he can. So I can just hold attack and just run towards my opponent and my guy will just keep attacking him as much as he can, but um, you won't win a lot of fights by doing that, because uh, if, you're, if your own character is hit while he's attacking, um, then your character will start ragdolling, and that's of course uh, something you really don't want to happen, because if you do, you can hit the ground and that will hurt you extra, extra much. Okay, so... Other than attacking, you can of course block attacks, which uh, which is something that you really need to master if you want to be able to fight uh, several opponents, uh, or one opponent too for that matter. And what you need to do is press right click at the exact moment that your opponent is making an attack, and that will make you that will make you block the attack. 
Uh, but you can't and block... Of course, yeah, go ahead. And of course, uh, that, that opens the, the crucial uh, reversal. Yeah, absolutely. Allows you to throw an enemy on the ground, which, like I said before, once an enemy's on the ground, it's a it's a good opportunity to take him down pretty quickly. Yeah, like a classic combo is when you when you do the judo throw and then you uh, instantly kick your opponent afterwards. But we'll, we'll get into that in a, in a moment. So let's try to do some combat here. I'm going to um, well before I do some combat, I should say if you just spam right click like this, you see my character will not try to defend himself a lot, and that's because when well, you don't want to be able to just spam right click all the time and block every single attack that wouldn't make a lot of sense so you actually need to time it with your opponent's uh, attack for this to work properly so let's do some combat, I'm going to try to block his attack so you can see what that looks like I succeeded once there success, fail come on, come on come on, come at me bro no, I guess he's, uh, he's not going to attack me anymore though. And, uh, he's just being intimidating. Yeah, he's just being <laughs> intimidating. What you want to do when you're doing these attacks is you want to actually listen for the sound of your opponent when he when he attacks. When he makes the sound, the uh, sound that he does, that all rabbits do, <laughs> then that is the time that you want to press right click to dodge or right, what was it, to block. And this is good because this allows you to use your vision to do other things than constantly look at their arms and legs to see if they're going to attack. Because there are a lot of things to keep track of in armor growth, especially when you're fighting several opponents. And uh, as you were talking about before, the throw, the counter attack that you can do. Uh, let's take a look at that. So how this works is after you block an attack, you can hold right click instead of just uh, clicking it and you will throw your opponent like this. You have to be careful with that too, because your uh, your enemies can do that as well. Yeah, exactly. And uh, though it's possible to reverse the reversal if you push block once again. Mhm. Mm Precisely. And uh, I'm going to try to demonstrate that. Let's see. I'm going to take my opponent, my opponent, and make it so that he has no aggression, and uh, he has full block follow up and full block skill. Okay. So now we. So the. Good. The parameter editor can be brought up using the uh, the U key after you click on on the character. Yeah. Or on on their spawn point. Exactly. You need to double click it. You have to need to have it selected, and you can do that. So now my opponent will not attack. He will just block all my attacks. So once you attack your opponent, if he attempts to do the throw, you just press right click, and you will kind of block his throw, like that. That that was a block throw. Let's see what a non block throw looks like. Come here! Don't you run away from me. No, that's not blocked. And you want to get uh, as many blocked throws as, as possible in there, obviously. And uh, if you do not want to block, for instance, there are several situations where you would not want to block an attack, because blocking an attack will make it so that you're vulnerable for a while, so if you're fighting several opponents and you block an attack, then other opponents can just run up and attack you while you're blocking. Uh, so you do not want to block in, in those situations. Or an opponent might have like a sword for instance, you can't block a sword with your arms, you want to dodge that. You can't block a huge uh, uh, fist from a wolf with your, uh, <laughs> with your arm either. Your arm will fly to the end of the world. So in those cases you want to dodge the attack instead. And what you do is you just press back or left or right from your opponent, uh, right when the attack happens. It's kind of like a a block, but instead of pressing right click, you just push, just tap away from your opponent. And let's see how that looks like. And of course, dodging makes you feel a lot like a badass. It's just <laughs> a really nice thing to do. <laughs> attack me, bro. Come on. Come on. <laughs> oh, I should have set the aggressiveness to one. Come on! What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> He's uh, showing you up on live uh, live stream. What did you say? He's showing you up on the live stream. Yeah. He's making me look stupid. Well, while we're waiting for that, there's one more thing we might want to mention with the uh, the blocking system. 
Um, in order, another another measure that David added to prevent people from spamming block is if you actually hold the block key while you try to perform an attack, it'll do a feign attack, so you won't actually perform the attack all the way. Uh, yes. Making it totally worthless. Exactly. Let's demonstrate that too as well. Oh, I don't want to grab you. You're my friend. So I'm holding right click and left click now. And as you can see, I'm doing no damage whatsoever. This looks like I'm doing a workout or something. Four, 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 four. <laughs> so that's not very useful. I did manage to get some dodges in there though. And there you have it. It's very good as well because you you move away from your opponent. So if you're doing, <laughs> <laughs> so if you're uh, fighting several opponents, then you can uh, do the dodge and you'll get some distance between yourself and your opponents as well, which is uh, good when you're fighting several opponents. Because you need to think about uh, at any moment when you have a uh, like two or more opponents next to you, that means that they can attack you at the same time, and that will like you will you will die. Yeah, it's pretty devastating when you've got uh, a, a couple of people circling you. Mm -hmm. And uh, the last thing that I want to talk about is uh, rolling out of Ragdoll. This is a good way you can use to avoid those soccer kicks, for instance. So let's say I'm Ragdoll like this. Uh, I can just press shift, the roll button, to roll out of the Ragdoll. And this works when you're in the air as well, you can just roll and land on your feet instead of smashing your face into the ground. Yeah, it's much more faster to get out of Ragdoll that way than to wait for your character to get up. Yeah, we can even compare it, like, this is the waiting f to get up. Ooh. And this is the roll. Ooh. So yeah, smacking around. And that's all of the things that you need to know in order to do some effective combat in Overgrowth. And practice. Yeah, of course, you need to, you still need to practice a lot. It's um, You actually need to practice in this game to be able to fight. This, that's kind of a weird thing in video games in general. <laughs> but, uh, kind of a nice alternative, though. Yeah, I, I like that fact, because then I feel that whenever I'm playing Overgrowth, I'm actually getting getting something done, at least. I'm, I'm getting better, get better at playing a game single player game, whatever that's worth. But yeah, <laughs> it's fun. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And the video tutorial, which will be a bit more structured than this, it will be up on Wednesday. So you can take a look at that on the YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash ogweekly. So yeah, look forward to that. Alright, what we got next? I'm going to turn off our breath so we won't have to live with that uh, wind in our ears. There we go. Okay. So that's the tutorial. Let's move on to the community segment, where we take a look at what the community has been up to. So first up, we have here the fan art watch, just as usual. And this is where we go to the Wolfire forums and go into the fan art thread and take a look at the recent fan art that has been posted since the last Overgrowth Weekly. And uh, maybe do some commenting on that. <laughs> So here we have the fan art. I put all of the fan arts together into one image as uh, as I've done the past uh, overgrowth weeklies. The past few overgrowth weeklies, I should say, not all. <laughs> okay, from top left, Wild Boar OG, and uh, and in the top right, he has made another image as well, of a ninja cat and a rabbit throwing disc. Which are nice images. Yeah, the cat on the left is kind of interesting. It's all you know, dressed in white, which normally you'd expect a ninja to be, you know, in full black to be as, as hard to see as possible. Yeah, he's a uh, ninja ninja. People won't understand that he's a ninja, <laughs> and therefore he's like Inception ninja or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But anyways, um, bottom left we have Kyle Reese with a really cool image of uh, Turner dragging away a killed dude with some guard standing around looking at, I don't know, some images. Maybe fan art, maybe they're looking at fan art, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this image, maybe they're looking at this image, that would also be like Imageception. Inception, yeah. Yeah, nice. So much Inception, I haven't watched, I haven't even watched Inception, I should totally do that. Uh, bottom right, we have New Win. I think his description for this image was, um, 
overgrowth equals rabbit plus cube equals heart or something like that. <laughs> Which is I, I really like the humongous trees. I think those look so cool. I agree. I I also like the general color scheme of the image. I mean, yeah, that it's so green. It's uh, it's not often that you see so like one-sided images when it comes to color, but I think it looks really cool. It's, yeah, it just reminds me kind of like mystical forests, almost something maybe out of I don't know if this is the right right genre, but like Lord of the Rings or something like that, something you'd you'd expect to find in in some sort of like fantasy novel. Yeah, precisely. So it's really cool. I don't know if anyone remembers from a, a couple of weeks ago when I was actually at uh, Anton's place, but we were talking about how we we might go disc golfing, and mm-hmm. then I figured since the rabbit in the upper right corner is playing disc golf, this would be relevant. But I don't know if you can switch over to Skype real quick. I can. We actually did end up going and and purchasing a few disc golf discs <laughs> <laughs> nice. and throwing them around and, and making fools of ourselves for a couple of minutes. So so it didn't go very well, I guess. Uh well. We we unfortunately didn't have as much time as we had wanted, so it was getting dark, and the uh, the course was on a very steep hillside with a lot of a lot of large bushes, and and we kind of lost discs a couple of times. Oh. <laughs> that happens. But, you know, practice makes perfect. Yes. So so you're like hardcore practicing. Do you have a a, <laughs> a like training montage that you're that you're doing or something like that? <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> you should Maybe record in time. that. You should record that post in the fan third training montage. <laughs> <laughs> good news is with with the magic of video editing, I could actually make it look like I was good. Yeah. <laughs> you should totally do that, man. Oh, yeah. And the last image for this week is Mr. Otten in the top middle. With uh, That's the guy who's been making all of these um, in-game images. He takes uh, images uh, taken from within Overgrowth and then he edits them to make them look cool. And I really like this one. This is probably the one that I like most from the ones that he has done. It's It reminds me a lot of Lugaru, like the background in Lugaru, which is the Yeah, eye. yeah, yeah, the, the eye from the menu or the, the loading screen. Not the loading screen, it's the menu. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a while since I've played. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just so cool. If you, I don't know if you can see that, you can probably see that. There's like a rabbit being... being um, reflected in uh, the rabbit's eye. It's just badass. <laughs> Very nicely done. Yeah, I agree. And that's the fan art for this week. That's all of it. It's not even two pages long. It's not even two pages of fan art this week. That's yeah. insane. I'm disappointed, guys. Come on. <laughs> Get with the program. Where's Shiny Gem, huh? Where's Shiny Gem? I know, right? God. Oh, well... Oh well, it was nice. Fine, fine art. Okay, so that's the fine art watch. Next we have a mod. We have the gun mod by Corbin3. Oh, guns in overgrowth. How we have waited for this. <laughs> Let me... Nothing more than... That, nothing that I like more than and watching rabbits shoot each other. More than, I guess, knife each other. Yeah. Absolutely. So let me install this mod real quick. There we go, that's all I need to do. And start up overgrowth again. So this mod, uh, it makes it so that you can kill characters. It's it's not a really it doesn't really have guns for real. It's more of a you know kill someone within a sphere mod. But uh, it will um, it will probably evolve and yeah, it'll better. develop over time, hopefully. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that it will. But it's uh, it's uh, pretty cool right now actually. Let's uh, load up Red Dessert. I like dessert. Mm, dessert. So when you have this mod installed, you can press Control to enter, enter aiming mode, and then you just press left click to uh, to shoot someone. And as you can see, the camera is kind of offset from your character as well, which is weird, but uh, you know that's that's the way it is. I press Control. It looks kind of stylized though, different angle, I guess. Yeah, but it, the weird thing is that it doesn't stay in uh, the same position. It kind of goes in an oval or yeah. which is weird. But uh, you can still shoot stuff, so it's fine. Also for, for some reason still my frame rate is sucks, it shouldn't suck. But it does. It might have been oh, there we go. Keep leaving. I was gonna hear the shooting sound is just someone <laughs> getting uh, two swords together. <laughs> 
I don't think it does any damage currently, it's, it just applies a force to the opponent, depending on how far away he is. So if he's close, he doesn't fly very far, but if he's this far away, he flies quite far. He's <laughs> <the distance. laughs> And uh, that's basically what you can do now with this mod. I'm sure that it will be improved in the future, but it's a good start, like, we have a kind of guns, you just need to uh, fix a lot of things with it, maybe... <laughs> Turn the sphere into some sort of crosshair and, and add an actual model of the gun and, and all that stuff. Yeah, and instead of having a sphere, maybe it's, I don't know if it's possible, but he could do a ray cast or something, maybe that'll work. I know they use that for yeah. a spear, for instance. I know there's a, a ray casting function or a ray drawing function. The one that David showed me, uh, their site a long time ago. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Flying rabbits. Yeah. When rabbits fly, bro. When rabbits fly. And that's the gun mod from Corbin 3. Real nice work. I hope he keeps uh, working on it. Yeah, it's it's. I always like seeing the uh, the scripting, the heavily scripted mods. I think it's really cool to see the. The, the changes you can do with the programming, even with just having limited access with the scripts. Yeah. I agree. There are a lot of things you can do. I'm actually uh, considering making my own little mod, like a hotspot mod where you can have smoke come. Someone requested it. Uh, actually, Anton requested it, so I'm going to see if I can <laughs> make that work. Um, yeah, hoping it'll work. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you can figure it out. We'll you, you've that. been pretty successful at most everything else you've done so far. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, well, next we have a level. It's Turner's Castle by Mr. Gog.b1. And I have... Uh, let's see. Let me load this. Which I believe as of yesterday was added to the menu mod, both the uh, full version and the level light. Yep. That is, that is correct. It was... Let's see, I'm going to go to the main menu and load the level. Uh, we have light. I'm playing the light version. I don't think it'll run very well. It's a really long level, so I won't be able to play through all of it. Um, it takes like 10 minutes to play through. It's pretty insane. Like I haven't seen any other level that it's taken this far. And I'm. So, it's a good thing. It's good that, that that's the case. Um, but you know, I was just really surprised by it. Have yeah. You, have you played it's, it? It's, it's kind of neat to see uh, you know, something that might be an actual potential level, because a lot of what's come out so far are there's like tests of this concept or that concept or or things like that. And the only other, like you said, long levels, I think, are the, the parkour levels like Suspension 2. Um, but I, I, I'd like to see more kind of lengthy levels with, with progression and all that. But no, I actually haven't gotten a chance to play it yet. Yeah. <laughs> I've been busy, unfortunately. Yeah, I know. Um, you mentioned suspension too, and why? Well, yeah, that's that level is quite long, but <laughs> I don't think that level counts because I don't think anyone has actually finished that level in one go. <laughs> I I can't get past that first section after the uh, the long run at the beginning. I can't I can't get up high enough to go around the turn. <laughs> I've been working at that for a long time. It's it's hard. It's really hard. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. All right, I forgot to uninstall the the uh, shooting mod, of course. But uh, you know, that's the way it is. As you can see, we'll the have a stylized view. <laughs> yeah, it's still a stylized view. I didn't. I uh, forgot to uninstall it on purpose. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, as I was going to say, this level is uh, it. It should w run fine on my computer, but I think it's because I upped my graphic settings. It seems like my computer can't handle streaming and upping my graphic settings. But it does matter. Like when I'm when I'm not streaming, if I'm just doing normal video recording, like I do, well, a lot. I've done it a lot. Um, then that works. So I guess I can turn off that, and maybe it'll work. Mm. Well, actually, actually, actually. <laughs> Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should do that. Because I have the sum launcher, so it's going to be really quick anyways, and I can uninstall the mod and everything. <laughs> it's going to be great. So that's the gun mod, and then I activate the old action script file. There we go. And then I start up sum. 
And uh, maybe maybe in a little while, depending on how long it takes for certain things to be implemented, you won't even have to do that. Some might be able to handle all that for you. Eventually. Um, with the mod thing, you mean? Uh, installing and then installing mods or enabling and disabling mods. Eventually. Oh yeah. Let's turn off using as well. Which is really nice. I mean, that mod is... That mod of yours is going to be insane. <laughs> well, I mean, at the moment, I, a lot of the work has been mine, but a lot of those new features that will be added will be from other people. We're just waiting on a few things, unfortunately. Yeah, it's a real, like, team project for you. Oh, yeah. But it's going to be great once you've finished it, like being able to just install mods whenever you want to and be able to just install any level you want to uh, without having to have all of the levels on your computer. Yeah, and hopefully if all goes well from within the game as well. Yeah, exactly. It'll be uh, as user-friendly as, as, as we can make it. <laughs> it's going to be cool. Um, and someone asked me about that I quickly aligned the overgrowth window. Yeah, I since I'm restarting the the game and all that, I uh, don't want to like align it manually. So I have a game thing that I run on now instead, which is a bit more demanding. I didn't get a lot of SP FPS by turning off those uh, graphics features, but I know mm. Hopefully, this old place isn't too dusty. It's been years. Oh yeah. <laughs> So this level, it has uh, a lot of parkour. I don't know how the original version is, I have only played the light version. But I think there are three opponents in this level. And uh, a lot of the level is uh, basically running around and platforming. On, uh, with <clears throat> and I think it has a good level of difficulty. Um, it's not too hard, like anyone should be able to get through it, but it's still fun. It's not like, it's still a challenge for, for you to get through it. Yeah. I feel like I've seen a couple of art sets in this level that I haven't seen used much. The uh, is that the hex screen it looks like, yeah. and like the partially destroyed ones. It's nice to see those in use. Yeah, I agree. Getting the O2 mod, uh, the full O2 mod from last, will will help you with getting a few assets that people that people haven't used a lot yet <laughs> to give your custom map a bit of flavor. <laughs> Yeah, this level. Well, that's that. Hopefully that kept all the low jumper from getting into my castle. Yeah, it keeps on. Like, if you look at this castle, it's pretty amazing. It's big. Yeah, it looks like he put a, a lot of work into it. Yep. He definitely did. And it's so nice because you see that green flag up there, for instance? I mean, you will walk up there, and you will be in at that tower up there, and, uh, like... You often go to places and you can look back at, oh, I used to be down there, I, I used to be all the way down <laughs> there. And it's really nice that he does that because it makes you feel uh, like a boss. You accomplished something. Yeah, exactly. It is important with a game. Um, so I'm not going to go any further because, well, it uh, lags a bit when I'm streaming this. And uh, it's, it's a long level, so I won't have time to do it. But I will upload a video of this level on... Well, I'm thinking Thursday. Oh, no, Friday? Yeah, Friday. I have this kind of uh, upload schedule that I've uh, that I've been thinking <laughs> about following. But sometimes I feel like I have too many videos to uh, to actually upload. So I'm like, hmm. Well, I have like three videos, and if I'm going to upload one video except for the tutorial every week, then like it's going to take three weeks with just those. So yeah, it could take a while to upload to YouTube, unfortunately. Yeah. So I don't know what I'll do about that. But anyways, I'll figure it out. It'll be there at least on Friday, maybe earlier, we'll, we'll see. Uh, so, that is the Turner's Castle by GOG.B1. Next we have a tutorial made by Anton. Quick mapping tutorial with advanced techniques. Hi there, ladies and... And this is a tutorial that Anton put together because uh, someone had created a... Uh, a structure in a level that he was working on, a work in progress, and uh, Anton noticed that he didn't he didn't use like 
the most optimal way to do things. So he kind of made a quick tutorial just to show off how you can actually do the structure in a better way to make it look more perfect and um, and easier to to just use in general. And as you can see here is the structure and it's got all the uneven walls and all that. So yeah, it shows you some uh, more advanced techniques that you can use to build bigger structures. Yeah, it'll be nice once we have a couple more of these videos built up and we can have a, a library we can just kind of show to people who are new to the community. Just like, here, here's how you do things. Yeah, exactly. And I'll probably make several tutorials that cover the same topics as he as he did because I feel like I want to make a tutorial on, on every topic. I want to, to <laughs> make tutorialize everything. Like even even if someone I'm thinking like this, if someone even if someone has made a tutorial on the same topic, I know that someone will probably like just the way that I make tutorials, I hope. <laughs> um, and still want to have the same for me. But yeah, anyways. Well, if you enjoy making them, no reason not to. Yeah. But it's good that Anton made this. Like it's uh, absolutely really great because it's going to take a while before I get to that because there are a lot of <laughs> tutorials to do. Oh yeah. And I'm just making one every week, so it's gonna take a while. Next one, community side notes. All right, so this is kind of like the community segment, but we're going to try to get through it a bit quicker than we do with the uh, with the community segment. Okay, so so first we have utility some launcher by some Ogu team. Do you like that? <laughs> some Ogu. Some overgrowth utilities team. This this some Ogu team. So, yeah, Alpha 1.4, would you like to talk about this? Sure, so 1.4 is actually a pretty pretty big update. Um, well, first thing here with the resolution presets and, and the full screen resolutions, we, ha we before just had it set up where you type in resolution and then you know, check whether you wanted it to be full screen or windowed. Um, but we kind of thought about it and realized if someone kind of set like a, a really bad resolution and, and told it to go full screen, it might mess with, with their uh, video settings and they might have a hard time kind of getting out of the game. Um, and so in order to prevent that, we've got a, uh, a drop down menu now that loads all the, the preset resolutions that your monitor supports. Um, and we save that information externally from the game since the game doesn't have the ability to, to save that kind of stuff. Um, so that's just kind of a security thing. And it's also nice now because you can actually have a windowed resolution and a full screen resolution saved independently of each other. So you can set your full screen resolution to whatever this, your screen size is and your windowed resolution to something else. And then instead of having to retype it each time, you just uncheck or check the checkbox. Cool. Um, next thing that's actually interesting is we built the uh, the updater for Anton's menu mod into the, the program as well so we can kind of phase out that old version. And this even is, as well will get phased out in time once we add the uh, the full sum overgrowth utilities uh, into the program. Um, besides that, a couple of bug fixes. Um, added uh, a change log so that next time you update, which actually a new update did come out, 1.5, a, a change log actually shows up so you can see what's new. Um, added a couple options for Mac users. Uh, Windows users know that when they run the game, they've got the two windows. There's like the normal normal overgrowth window and then the little debug window that has output. Uh, but on Macs, when you just run the app file, it doesn't show up by default. Um, so we had an option so that you can launch the overgrowth uh, executable and also bring up that debug window so you can see what's going on if you're doing scripting or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, added a couple of little bells and whistles, download speeds. Um, instead of just saying how many megabytes are you downloaded, it actually says how fast you're downloading it. And uh, a couple other little things, but mostly it. <laughs> cool. And so, then we also had, just the other day, uh, an update to 1.5, which was, once again, just basically bug fixes and things for getting ready for the uh, the next release, which will be coming out hopefully in a week or two, and we'll have a lot of new features as well. Would you like to uh, tell us what kind of features will be in there? Um, I'm not sure I can talk about everything yet. We'll, we'll, we'll see. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it should be um, anyway. I don't think there's anything I can talk about directly yet. I, I, I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll we'll keep you updated once we once we have things kind of finished up. All right. Cool. Nice. So that's the uh, sum launcher, the sum launcher by some Ogo team, some OG utilities team. Uh, next, we have a mod. We have the main menu mod, uh, the main menu with the custom maps mod, actually, by Anton. And Anton added a bunch of uh, levels to um, 
to the uh, to the mod, and as well, you have updated the actual uh, the actual main menu, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, the you mean the new buttons? Yeah. Johannes actually scripted those for us. Oh, Johannes did. Oh, yeah, it just says right there. Johannes added them. I was like, oh, I guess you made this, so you added it, but uh, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so there's a new button that you can use when you're launching levels, and uh, it allows you to pick a random custom map or a random default map. So if you don't know, if you're like, oh, I don't know what level I'm going to play, <laughs> then you can just press that and let the game decide for you. It's also great if, if you haven't played some maps in a while and you, you kind of want to go back and to see what, what there is. I actually just used it for the first time yesterday, and I uh, came across an old parkour map that I hadn't played in a long time, and... I've gotten better at it since I played it before, and I remember before not being able to do any sort of... Uh, like, I couldn't even get past the first or second area of that level, and I managed to, to get through all of it after a little while, so that, that felt kind of nice. <laughs> nice. I think I got some good training from the, the Suspension 2 map. Yeah. And the multiple hours I've spent messing with that. Yeah, if it randoms you into uh, Suspension 2, you'll be like... Damn <laughs> you! <laughs> <laughs> Damn you, Overgrowth. Yeah, it's hard, man. It's hard. Oh yeah. And other than that, Anton also added kill kill this a city in the desert level, uh, Gog dot B one's Turner Turner's castle level, and Merp twenty's ancient desert cat town level. That brings our total up now. Is that I mean we're getting close to six maps in there. Yeah. A lot of maps, man. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the download size, of course, is growing too. We're over, a little bit over 500 megabytes at this point. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Oh, I haven't told. We're at 59 maps. Cool, 59 maps. So one more, and we're at 60. And you can officially add to the title that you have 60 levels. You can't say <laughs> over 60. I mean, it needs to be 61 before, so you can say like, oh, we have over 61 levels. Because if you say just 61, <laughs> then it's it's too it's too specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gotta market it well. Yeah. So we have the blood mod. We have a last blood mod slash no death mod. And he updated it to work with alpha 166. And yeah, this mod adds a bunch of mods to your game that you can activate or deactivate through a menu in the game. I feel like this mod has a lot more to it than the name makes it seem like it does. Yeah, it definitely does. Definitely does, but we should move on. We're going to run over schedule. Uh, we have <laughs> another mod by last. We have last's object browser tab mod by last. <laughs> and um, this one adds extra objects to your game. It uh, adds extra objects to your object browser, actually. The, the objects are actually already there, but you can't find them in the object browser. You need to manually find them. But last's, uh, last adds them to the object browser um, with an image and all that. And yeah, we, oh yeah, it's very, very helpful and he did a lot of work, I'm sure, to get that, that to look as nice as it does. Yeah, I'm sure. About the images and all that. Exactly. So that's really nice, you should get it. It's the, there are six new items since the last update, I think. So, cool. And next we have a, another level, A City in the Desert by Kill This. Kill This. And this is the <laughs> guy with this a structure that Anton helped make a tutorial for to uh, refine a bit and he has fixed it in the latest version. And this is just a nice uh, town level. It doesn't uh, have anything to kill yet, I think. It's just uh, looking around and, and uh, yeah, thinking about how nice it is. <laughs> yeah. I want to show you this image, actually. You see, if you see this merchant, you see that item right there. I think those are actually a pair of pants that he shrunk down. But I realized that that is probably a hat with uh, like uh, holes for uh, for the ears. And I <laughs> thought that was really nice. Wow, never seen that before. <laughs> yeah, me neither. I was like, why, why are the small pants there? And I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> you could put that on your head if you're happy. <laughs> if you like wearing pants on your head, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. And then we have An Ancient Desert Cat Town by Merp20. 
this level is a... Uh, let's see, I actually scrolled too far. This doesn't have any enemies either, it doesn't have any images here uh, either, unfortunately. But it's one of those uh, uh, levels where you're just supposed to explore and, uh, you know, look at the environments. Uh, what you can do is you can climb up like a building and find a weapon there, but it's nothing too advanced. It's just a nice <laughs> thing to look at, basically. <laughs> Which is nice. By kill this ancient desert cat town by Merp20. <laughs> and next we have this Bear Clan character by Andridge, and he did make a video of this, so... So let's take a quick look at that. This Bear Clan character, he's been working on it for a long, long time. Uh, not constantly, I guess, but... Um, yeah, he took a break for a little while. But uh, it's it's pretty fantastic. I mean, it's it's one of the most detailed uh, things I think, I think I've seen anyone do for Overgrowth yet. Yeah, I agree. And he has actually gotten it into the game now, but this video shows like several different uh, steps, like through the process. I like I like that the the sickle kind of almost makes you think of like Russian almost, which fits with the bear, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Russian bear man. And the I feel like I feel like the style just fits really well too. It it reminds me almost of the, of the wolf a little bit. Little wolf. I said it reminds me of the style, reminds me of kind of the style of the wolf in the engine. Oh, I see. Yeah, like, in general, this model is it just works really well. It's just a really, really well-made model. Yeah. And as you can see in these in-game images here, it fits into the game perfectly. Unfortunately, he has not rigged it for animation yet. But uh, Yeah, it'll be, it'll be great to see that once he has that working. Yeah. I fully agree. Man, it looks so good. It looks so yeah. good. Yeah. <laughs> huge and to, muscular. <laughs> I want to be able to be smashed by that guy. By his huge paws. I can only imagine how much damage that would do considering how, how powerful the wolves are. <laughs> yeah. I think that you would need to, like, tone down the powerfulness of the wolf just if you have, like, a bear in the game. Yeah, just make it reasonable. Yeah. Someone's saying, hey, I want to play as him. I don't want to play as him. I want to be, like, <laughs> the underdog. That's more fun than being able to smash every single person in my path. Unless the other guys are bears as well, of course. Then I guess that's fine. But, you know, imagine they probably have a, a lot of stamina. It'd be a pretty challenging fight. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it could be, like, a boss battle or something. That would be cool. Yeah. Anyways, secretly um, bears are, are are leading the wolves or something like that. Yeah, that the storyline. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so cool. Like there are no bears in the entire game, and then at the end they just incorporated uh, um, Andridge's uh, bear character, <laughs> and he's like the last boss. You know, the wolf king is actually a bear. <laughs> <laughs> the wolf king is actually controlled by the bear. You know. See. He's just a pawn. Yeah, exactly. In a bigger game, there are little islands all over the world, and uh, <laughs> and these bears controlling every single one of them with these little wolfies or something. <laughs> so next we have the new segment where we take a look at what's new. So we have some Linux porting progress. Oh yeah, Linux porting. Progress. I know people have been uh, waiting for it for quite a long time. <laughs> Yes, a lot indeed. of people are happy to see this. Absolutely. Take a look at that. Get a load of this. It's Overgrowth running in Linux and uh, and he's standing right there. Yeah, man. It still has a <laughs> bunch of issues. Like, I don't, th I don't think the UI works, actually. But, uh, but you know, it's a minor Progress thing. is being made. <laughs> Yeah, progress we made. Like he, uh, the last progress we saw was this. Like he could get the Wolfire logo and a black window, which is not very impressive. And uh, going from that to you know this is uh, quite actually cool. rendering in game and and, and yeah, <laughs> it's it's a lot more. Yeah. So Linux man, Linux. I see a lot of people in the chat like yeah, I happy <laughs> yeah, Linux. <laughs> yeah Linux. Get, get Linux go. fanboy shoutouts. Yeah, I like Linux as well. I would use it if there were games for Linux. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah. 
So next we have tweet 30,000 Wolfire YouTube subscribers, which is cool. 30,000 subscribers, that, that's a lot. Oh yeah. I remember back in the day, I mean, this is this is going way, way back, but back when the uh, whole pink beard thing was potentially going to happen and, and the shaving thing, they were trying to get a certain number of subscribers. And I think it was, was it, was it like 3,000 or 5,000 or something like that? That yeah. was just a couple of years ago. I think so. Something like that. But I, I don't remember. I mean, maybe it was even grown, less. grown quite a bit since then. Yeah, it's 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 become bigger. I mean, thirty thousand subscribers. It's it's a lot of subscribers for a game that, like Overgrowth, that's still in alpha. Yeah, it's pretty pretty damn cool. <laughs> and of course, we have this image. Oops, we have this image. I think no. Okay, I ac accidentally. Oh, I pressed the wrong link. I guess that's fine then. <laughs> uh, Aubrey drew this 30,000 pixel image to celebrate, you know, 30,000 subscribers, 30,000 30, pixels. Makes sense. Yeah. I would like a list that shows uh, who is uh, every pixel, like wh which pixel in this image am I? I want... Label each one. I want to be the gl glare in his eye lens. Like YouTube won't tell you... Uh what what subscriber number you are will it i don't think it will but i think it yeah. stores the subscribers in like a a list <laughs> yeah an array or something so, like so that. they yeah so they are like in order if you if you view all the subscribers they should be displayed in order i think but yeah. okay so i go down the list and count how many people there are until you find your name <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 15,008 15,009 I, yeah. I think i was one of the first ones to subscribe though so it should actually be pr quite simple to find me reasonable. in particular, <laughs> but 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 that's boring, you know, because that means that I'm going to be like, like the little cloud piece, like at the top <laughs> left, <laughs> like ooh, I'm I'm that thing up there. I don't want to be like I'm part of the sky. Yeah, I don't want to be that. That's, oh, I didn't really show you. I'm I'm that thing up there. Is what I said. Then I pointed up there, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. Man, man. Man, man. Okay, we have another tweet. Knife slice flinching and wounded stances. So, yeah, if you're sliced by a freaking knife, uh, you will look like you're flinching and you look like you're wounded. But there's lots more work to do, but now he's got the basic stuff down and he can do freaking wounded stances. Insane. Yes, I just, I just got confirmation from up high that it was... Uh, for, for the YouTube subscribers, there were... Uh, 5,000 was the, the mark that we managed to hit. Oh, so uh, at 7,500, they they were going to have John shave his head, and at 10,000, the agreement was that the community would vote on John's hairstyle, though unfortunately we didn't make it that far. That was lame. I remember that. that was lame. Yeah, I was, I, was, I was hoping for that. Yeah. <laughs> Mullet! Totally, totally. <laughs> but yeah. Freaking knife attacks, man. It's insane. I love knives. Uh, yeah, next tweet. We have a sheathing and drawing knife tweet. Working on sheathing and drawing the knife. He has the standard magic magnetic belt for now. Thought I'd like... <laughs> though I'd like to do something about that. Being able to sheath, sheath the knife, that means that we will be able to carry more than one weapon. Oh yes, which is crucial. Yes, absolutely. But I'm looking forward to this feature. I don't know why, because I guess sheathing your weapon makes you feel badass. I don't know. It also means that throwing your weapon may not potentially leave you screwed <laughs> if you miss. Yeah, you can have like two knives with you. Is that what you mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Backup weapons. Backup weapons for the wing. And next we have another tweet. Better thrown weapon damage. Change throw weapon damage so that it takes mass, velocity, and sharpness into account better. And Unfortunately, I think that'll reduce the number of funny videos on the topic. <laughs> I think it'll produce a more like awesome. Oh god. Uh oh. <laughs> That's. Too... I'm doing better this time. <laughs> yeah, you're good, man. I think I said the I word uh, a while ago. Yeah, too. Well, yeah, right in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> Always two strikes. I'm like this close all the time. If someone is wondering what we're talking about, I 
I have basically banned the words. Okay, I, I can say this now because people should understand. I banned the words indeed and awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I, I'm not gonna say them again. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, just because um, I was saying them too much, uh, and <laughs> and I I was like I need to expand my vocabulary. So those words I'm not saying them like. I'm trying to not say them at least, and instead I'm saying words like super good and uh, insane <laughs> and uh, copacetic. Phenomenal. Yeah, phenomenal and sensational. PG Keen. <laughs> I think that might be my favorite, PG Keen. Yeah, I think that's um, Anton's favorite too. Nice words. But yeah, it's nice. It's nice all over, man. So yeah, that's the end of the agenda. That's the end of Overgrowth Freaking Weekly number 59. And, oh yeah. Uh, next week we have Overgrowth Weekly number 60, which should be really cool. We're going to take a look at the next alpha as usual, you know, you know, all that stuff. And in the next alpha there will be knife slice flinching and wounded stances and sheathing and drawing knives and better <laughs> thrown weapon damage. <laughs> you sound like you're very excited. Yeah, I am very excited. And rightfully so. <laughs> this is going to be really cool. So looking forward to it. But yeah, thanks for watching. Don't forget to go to ogweekly.com. And uh, of course, we have the archives there where you can look at every single previous show. On Wednesday, I'll get the tutorial up. On at least Friday, I'll get that uh, video up, up that the uh, castle map turns castle map. Yeah, it's, well, it's cool stuff. <laughs> See yeah. you in next week. Yeah. Thanks once more for watching. <laughs> and uh, see you guys next week. Bye.